12 gnarly and terrifying Resident Evil movie monsters explored in detail. Japanese video game franchise Resident Evil is renowned for its rich backstories, world building, and horrifying creatures. After German studio Constantin Film bought the rights for an adaptation followed by Screen Gems acquiring distribution rights, director Paul Wes Anderson was hired to direct the first Resident Evil movie. The movie went on to branch out into a franchise, with six movies in its arsenal over a span of 14 years. Even though it is a loose adaptation, the franchise is exhilarating in its own way. This story is one about variants of zombies called the undead, crazy viruses, and creatures with terrifying mutations. But it is also about the perseverance of humans, who manage to survive even after a zombie apocalypse and a pandemic far worse than the coronavirus that had plagued their world. Pharmaceutical company Umbrella Corporation and its connection to the T-Virus resulted in living beings turning into zombies after the virus leaked into the atmosphere. Meanwhile, the corporation conducted shady experiments on test subjects in their secret bases where they create new zombies and enhance the existing ones. Alex discovers these twisted dealings of the corporation, making her a prime nemesis in their eyes. Alice fights several variants of these zombies while Umbrella tries to get her killed. There are also several nods to Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll with the main character being named Alice, one of the supercomputers being named Red Queen while her counterpart is called White Queen, and the mansion is called Looking Glass House. I'm not. In 37 minutes, the last of the human settlements will fall. There will be no survivors. In this video, we will talk about some of the vilifying creatures from the franchise and skim over some new characters who are about to appear in Resident Evil Raccoon City. Before diving into the content, we would like to make a very small request to our viewers. Please subscribe to Marvelous Videos, like and comment on our videos, and press the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload a video. We would be grateful to you, and we hope to bring you the best nerdy content. And with that, let's get right into this video. Bloodshot in the world of Resident Evil, the Umbrella Corporation had converted an engineered virus called the T-Virus into a military weapon. This virus could bring dead humans back to life as mutants and were called undead. One such undead was the bioweapon Bloodshot, sealed under the hive, an underground laboratory constructed by the Umbrella Corporation. Bloodshot was one of the bioweapon prototypes created by the corporation and resided in experimentation in the hive. It probably lived for a considerable amount of time as the remains of mutant undead and human subjects were often partially eaten while the bones from their skeleton were littered all around. Alice and Michael had infiltrated the hive when they were searching for a potential antivirus against the T-Virus. They used the vents to travel around the base but had fallen into Bloodshot's experimentation chamber. As they searched the desolate place, Michael ended up agitating a mutilated undead. Not long after, he was attacked by Bloodshot and killed. The mutant had decapitated Michael by biting down his head. Light sensitivity happened to be Bloodshot's weakness, which Alice exploited as she created a diversion with her flashlight. It worked, and she used this time to restrain Bloodshot by hooking a chain to its chest. The mutant kept pulling on it with its monstrous strength, but the hook only ended up tearing its torso open. It died, or that's what Alice thought. As she tried to escape by climbing out beneath it, Bloodshot returned to life, but she stabbed her knife through its chin and straight into the brain of the creature, killing it. Doc, an informant of the Umbrella Corporation, arrived and asked Alice about the nature of the creature. She told him about Bloodshot being a bioweapon created from humans, but no one knew if there were other creatures like Bloodshot. It was likely that if other mutants of the sort did exist, they would all die off and release the T-Virus into the world. Nemesis The Umbrella Corporation also developed super soldiers via genetic engineering. One such super soldier was Nemesis, who appeared in Resident Evil Apocalypse, the second installment of the Resident Evil film franchise. Matt Addison was just a regular guy in the past who was turned into the Nemesis. He worked in an environmental group that stood against the Umbrella Corporation and often attempted to expose the corporation's dirty secrets and illegal research. His sister, Lisa, had disappeared while looking for an emergency entrance to the 
hive. As Matt investigated the matter, the operatives at Umbrella handcuffed him. However, he managed to escape and also helped Alice escape the place. After this, Matt got infected with the T-Virus due to an attack by the liquor. He began to mutate and was taken to the hive by the corporation where experiments were conducted on them. The Umbrella had a program called the Nemesis Program, a project to turn humans into bioweapons. Matt was exposed to the T-Virus, which warped his body severely. The corporation kept experimenting on him, and ultimately, he became a killing machine and destructive force who was nearly invulnerable. He was also equipped with weapons and cybernetic implants like a cyborg. Nemesis was sent out to Raccoon City for a test drive at first, with the objective of eliminating the members of the city's police force residing in a gun shop. It was also ordered to kill Alice Abernathy, but she managed to evade him due to the superhuman abilities she had gained from being experimented on. Nemesis and Alice engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat later, where Alice got the upper hand over him due to her being intelligent and faster while Nemesis had a programmed way of them. After almost killing him, Alice realized that it was actually Matt. In the end, Matt was able to break Umbrella's programming over him and fired at the troops of his superior, Major Kane who had originally ordered him to kill Alice. Later, Nemesis seemingly died after a chopper crashed right on top of him. Axemen Most of the undead are humans who have accidentally mutated after being exposed to the T-Virus. But the Axemen are different. They were created by the Umbrella Corporation deliberately and are notorious for using large axes, as you can guess by the name, and also for their agility and towering height. Apart from the Hive, the Umbrella Corporation had another layer called the Umbrella Prime an underwater complex where all the bioweapons were tested. This top secret research facility was where the Axemen were created and was located in Siberia. Before the global T-Virus pandemic struck, bioweapons were made in this facility for international customers. After the Red Queen ordered for its assistance in the extermination of mankind, the Axemen were released into the world. An Axeman encountered a human for the first time after the viral outbreak had plagued the world for several years. It took place in Los Angeles, where one Axeman went to the Citadel Correctional Facility, a place which housed survivors of the pandemic. The Axeman broke down the main gate with his large axe, and then entered the prison showers where it then sliced Kim Young, a survivor, in half. Alice was also present there. The Axeman hit her head with a side blow due to which she got knocked out. Player Redfield fired a shotgun at him at close range, which incapacitated him. The remaining survivors tried to escape through a tunnel, but it was too late. The Axemen reawakened and threw his axe at them. Luck was on their side as the axe hit no one, and finally, he died after receiving a blast from a shotgun to the head. As Ada Wong and Alice ventured through the testing floor of Umbrella Prime in the New York stage, they came across two more Axemen. They tried to kill Alice but failed as the axes got stuck in the frame of a cab. Ada and Alice shot a nearby gas tank and the explosion killed both the Axemen. Liquor these mutated bioweaponized creatures are also a product of the T-Virus experimentation test. Created at the Hive, these creatures were produced in masses after data accumulated during the experiment. Not only were they born in the Hive, but they were created in Umbrella Prime as well. They were sideshows for international buyers of bioweapons. Umbrella security officer Spence Parks had contaminated the hive with the T-Virus after being bribed to do so. While the sanitation team executed its investigations, one of the liquors escaped its storage tank. The Red Queen allowed it to hunt down the squad to deny their escape. As the liquor obeyed the commands, it attacked Spence. As the rest of the survivors left the facility to board the train for the Looking Glass House in the Arclay Mountains, the liquor followed them. It was killed, but managed to kill Umbrella Soldier. Soldier Kaplan beforehand. Some of the liquors were released into the world soon, probably due to the hive shutting down or because of the Red Queen's order. They plagued Raccoon City and preyed on the civilians. Alice was able to kill several of them at the Raven's Gate Church. Mutants who mutated after being bitten or inhaling the T-Virus, and mutants like the liquor who mutated as the virus was injected into their human living tissue were different. 
In the case of the liquor who belongs to the second category, their skin shed off completely. Their overdeveloped muscle from mutation was exposed and they have super strength and superior fighting abilities, scaling them above both humans and regular undead. Oh my god. The skeleton also morphs to a beastly, animalistic form, causing the liquor to walk on all fours instead of upright. This optimized their body, allowing them to move at greater speeds and having better agility. Their claws were razor sharp. Apart from using them as a deadly melee weapon, they could also climb the walls and the ceilings with these claws. They could grab things at a distance with their tongue, similar to frogs. The tongue could also act as a hot knife whipping through flesh. They had a keen sense of smell and hearing, but their vision was compromised. Capepio. Capepio, or infectors, as referred to by Dania Cardoza and Albert Wesker, are creatures who appeared during the pandemic. It is, of course, a mutant, but the T-virus mutation has not been disclosed. They were constructed as a counter-offense for aerial advantage that the humans had due to their aerial gadgets and locomotives. These creatures are quite big, almost as big as a truck, if not more. They are multi-winged and have a humanoid head. The mandibles are curved, they are horned, the legs are a lot smaller and insectoid, while the claws are like scythes. Its appearance is extremely demonic and deformed. They looked as if their claws could not support their weight, but these very claws were very lethal during combat. The lower ends of their bodies had these pincer-like claws, but they possessed brute force, making their clawed attacks a lot more deadly than what the opponent would expect. It is strong enough to tear off Alice's Jeep's roof without any prior planning. Resident Evil, the final chapter, was novelized, which gave us more insight on the Capepio. The spines of the creature can be detached willingly. Getting hit by it would cause the victim to mutate into a featureless mass with tentacles. Combining with others would allow this new mutation to turn into a melange. Magini Zombies Magini zombies, or the Magini undead, appeared in Resident Evil Retribution and Resident Evil Afterlife. They had dug into the Citadel Correctional Facility prison where six survivors, Bennett, Luther, Crystal, Wendell, Kim, and Angel, resided. Wendell felt their presence. The Magini broke into the shower room of the prison. After Alice caught Wendell spying on her, one of the Magini zombies attacked him. It then dragged him into the tunnel it had used to break into the room. They also ambushed Crystal, Alice, and Chris Redfield after breaching the prison barricades. Crystal was killed and several more of the mutants swarmed the place, outnumbering Alice and Chris. Alice killed several of these Magini zombies and with help from Luther, dispatched some more outside the main entrance of the facility. The others tried to use the shower tunnel created by the Magini to escape. Player and Alice reunited with Luther and Chris. That's right. The Umbrella Prime created more of these mutants after learning how to recreate the mutation that burst them. They were not born in a more controlled environment where they could be experimented on over and over again, becoming lethal bioweapons. In the end, a special parasite that could control the undead was born. It could also turn humans into superhumans and was called the Las Plagas. This parasite could create intelligent mutants. Several of the Magini undead swarmed beneath the ice after the Umbrella Prime facility was destroyed. While fighting the Bad Rain, the clone of Umbrella's securing operative, Rain Ocampo, as Alice was overpowered by Rain, she shot the layer of ice beneath Bad Rain who plunged into the mouth of the Magini zombies swarming below. They were eradicated after the antivirus was released into the air. In terms of appearance, the mutants have pale greenish color to them. Their mouths branch out into flower-like tentacles which bite victims down. They can run and have higher intelligence compared to the ordinary undead. Can't kill me. Tyrant. 
Dr. Alexander Isaacs injected himself with the antivirus against the T-virus, but he got shot in the chest by a cohort which caused an internal biological reaction. His body developed a deformity, allowing him to shoot tendrils as he looked like he was rotten. Laser fields were his kryptonite. A tyrant is created through a T-virus infection or by cloning the specimen. They are products of Umbrella's research and named after the virus itself. Unlike regular undead, tyrants have intelligence and were created as the ultimate bioweapon. One of the clones of Dr. Alexander Isaacs became head of Umbrella Corporation's main research division. He discovered Alice's body after Raccoon City was bombed. When she was weaponized, after three weeks of experimentation, she retained her memories and escaped. But Isaacs activated program Alice to bring her under computerized control and monitor her moves. He tried to track Alice all over the continent, but it was all in vain. So, he decided to clone her instead and use its blood to domesticate the undead so that humans can resurface. He discovered that even though the undead wanted to consume human flesh, they could not sustain it and yet could remain active for decades. After his test, he was able to increase the intelligence of his subjects, but the infection got stronger. He tried to retrieve Alice after realizing that only the real Alice could help him attain success. He set up a camp in Las Vegas, or whatever remained of it. With enhanced zombies, he hoped to have Alice killed so that he could take her corpse and use her blood sample for his experiment. After his plan failed, Isaacs got bitten by an enhanced zombie. He stayed under house arrest and injected large amounts of antivirus into himself, but Alexander Slater shot him in the heart as per Wesker's orders. Isaac had already begun to mutate and transformed into a disgusting monster with tentacles. He killed everyone in the facility until the AI, White Queen, sealed him. The new Alice clone killed him in the end by activating a laser grid which sliced him into cubes. However, it was just a clone while the real Isaacs was beneath the city's ruins. Uber Liquor. Created in Siberia's Umbrella Prime, the Uber Liquor was deployed at the Moscow simulation for the termination of Leon's strike team. During the fight, it consumed Sergei's head and proceeded to attack his teammates. But Alice hit the Uber Liquor with her car, knocking it out for a brief moment. Soon after, it returned to its feet, ready for combat. It chased Alice and trampled the forces of the Lost Plagas Undead, who got in the Uber Liquor's way. Soon, Alice incapacitated the creature and buried it alive beneath the subway ceiling that had collapsed. The Uber Liquor dug its way out of the rubble and encased his victim Sergei's headless body. It returned for the intruders, knocked Rain into a wall, snapping her neck while doing so, knocked Barry to the ground, snatched Becky away with its tongue and encased her in a cocoon like he did with Sergei. After all this, it waited for Alice to rescue the child. Alice blows the monster with a grenade using Ada Wong's grappling hook. They escape the Uber Liquor's attack and the grenade explodes and the beast dies. As the mutants assault the White House, several Uber Lickers are spotted amongst them but are seemingly killed by the army. If any of these mutants were to survive, it can be assumed that they were killed off after the antivirus was released into the air. The difference between a Licker and an Uber Licker is that the latter has been improved extensively over the former. It is as big as a small house and towers over everyone. The experiments also flaunt how much its abilities have improved as it sports a large forked tongue, long and powerful enough for ensnaring grown men. Its claws had sharpened and its durability was heightened. Despite having naked skin, the Uber Licker could go against fire weapons. It could also create thick resin to cocoon its prey by creating organic matter. Cerberus, aka Zombie Dogs. The Cerberus are undead dogs or zombie dogs, created after the canines got infected by the T virus. After the T-Virus escaped into Raccoon City, the canine creatures around the city got infected. Before this incident, dogs in the facility had turned into undead dogs after being infected. 
a UBCS mercenary named Nikolai Genovayev was killed by the Cerberuses. These Cerberuses were from the K-9 unit and were killed due to a gas explosion. Jill Valentine had turned on the cooking range in the school's cafeteria and escaped with Angela Ashford. Alice used her cigarette to ignite the fume, causing the Cerberuses to die. A family of murderers keeps six Cerberuses to finish off their victims. These zombie dogs were missing a majority of their skin, had cataract eyes, irritated flesh, and bones that could be seen. Alice had released them, subsequently killing three of them. She then trapped the rest in thick wires. She used them as bait to kill off the family, leaving the dogs to eat them. <laughs> As Albert Wesker was aboard the Arcadia, he kept two Cerberuses as pets as well. They had evolved from whatever the T-Virus mutation had created and could split open their head, had a bulbous inner mouth for attacks, and had large mauls. Alice had killed them with a coin-loaded shotgun, one from a direct hit and the other with a ricochet. Umbrella Corporation used a large pack of these Greek mythology-inspired zombie dogs to guard the hive's secret entrance. These Cerberuses did not have the same abilities as the ones mentioned right before. It could not split open its head, but it could dislocate its bottom jaw, revealing rows of teeth and webbed mandibles. They all suffered from necrosis due to their flesh being rotten, which also prevents them from being able to swim. The Red Queen had input commands in them and used cybernetic augmentation. The second variant was created via the same process that created the Magini zombies. Zombie. These are humans who died but were revived by the T-Virus. The way they are created is the same in the movie franchise and its video game counterpart. They are undead mutants with cannibalistic urges. The epidermis of their skin is seemingly rotting due to the mutation, making them appear dead and their bones visible. The T-Virus severely deteriorated the neocortex of the brain, causing the brain to disintegrate and become severely limited. This causes the mutant's behavior to get reduced to acting on basic impulses such as food requirements, like animations. They also lose most of the sensory perceptions. Their requirement for human flesh as food remains to be a mystery as they did not require the flesh to sustain themselves. Rather, they could have lived for decades without hunting. The body undergoes severe necrosis after being infected by the T-Virus. The flesh and bones get exposed for several mutants as the skin disintegrates but the body's mass gets enhanced and strengthened. But their motor skills take a back seat. The mutants find themselves constantly thirsting for human flesh while the stomachs produce stomach acid in larger than normal amounts. The game counterparts of these zombies show the mutants to be extremely sturdy without needing to vomit and get it out of the system. The eyes of the undead are covered with a film of white or gray mucus, just like the undead in the Resident Evil video game series. As a living being rots after being dead, the sensitive mucus membrane turns into mucus more or less. Conditions caused by the virus that are supposed to be fatal to humans allowed them to survive in the pandemic. Despite their enhanced strength, one can kill an undead using an axe or any other weapon or method to decapitate it. Lisa Trevor. Introducing a new character who is about to make an appearance in the upcoming movie from the franchise, Resident Evil Raccoon City, Lisa Trevor was the first person who became a progenitor adapter since the Neolithic. She was an American superhuman, abducted by what gradually became the Umbrella Pharmaceuticals in the future. She was exposed to a strain called the progenitor strain but managed to survive it. As a result, she had acquired enhanced superhuman abilities. She became a reliable test subject for experimentations and research on bioweapons. In 1988, a virus called the Golgotha virus was isolated in her blood during research, after which she stopped being useful to the Umbrella Company. Due to her ability, she managed to survive her execution and went on to live in the mountains. She died in 1998 after the facility where she resided was destroyed. Lisa Trevor was born to George Trevor and Jessica Trevor in 1953. Spencer conducted experiments on Lisa and Jessica by injecting them with two separate strains of the progenitor virus, type A and type B. As they underwent the experiments, their mental state worsened as a side effect of the progenitor disease. 
Lisa's body reacted to the experimentation a lot better than Jessica's body did, and she gradually developed superhuman strength. Not as much as you would get from a properly engineered strain though. Her abilities increased while her mental condition got worse. This resulted in her undergoing a violent outburst on Wednesday at age 15 after having dinner with one of Spencer's employees who was impersonating Jessica. In 1988, Lisa Trevor was selected for another special program where the NEA parasite would be injected into her body. Umbrella Europe had engineered them to improve the brain's performance, however, its success rate was low. As the parasite was implanted into her, her immune system attacked and destroyed it but also absorbed its DNA into Trevor's. Her consciousness, which had deteriorated vastly due to the progenitor virus, was restored with intelligence to an extent, but tentacles had grown on her back. <laughs> William Birkin Dr. William Birkin was one of the top virologists in Umbrella Corporation and had developed the G-Virus. He was also more responsible than anyone else for causing the destruction of Raccoon City. He will be introduced in the upcoming Resident Evil movie. He joined the corporation when he was 16 and worked under the tutelage of James Marcus. He aided Marcus in discovering the T-Virus and was later transferred to the Arclay Laboratory where they met the first long-term test subject of Umbrella. Lisa Trevor. He met Alexia Ashford in 1981 and was threatened by her genius intellect. They maintained a rivalry until she put herself in cryogenic stasis after becoming her own test subject for the T. Veronica virus. After progress with the NEA type parasite and its experimentation on Lisa Trevor, Birkin attained a breakthrough. Even though the experiment failed, he discovered that the progenitor virus injected in Lisa had absorbed the mutagenic organisms that were injected into her, and it all created a completely new virus called the G-Virus. He was transferred to Raccoon City in 1991, and he conducted his G-Virus research from them. Later, Umbrella tried to retrieve the virus from him and sent a security service officer before the North government extracted Birkin. In the end, Birkin was mortally wounded after the US SS fired on him and took away his virus samples. While Birkin was nearing death, he removed a syringe filled with the G-Virus and injected the virus into himself. His life was saved after his wounds healed rapidly, but he mutated into a violent, monstrous creature. <laughs> Alexia Ashford Adding to the list of newcomers is member of the British nobility, Alexia Ashford. Alexia was a result of a cloning experiment called Project Code Veronica. She had been adopted by Dr. Alexander Ashford, but was originally the daughter of the first Countess Veronica Ashford. She had become the virologist in Umbrella Pharmaceuticals, an organization co-founded by her grandfather, Dr. Edward Ashford. Alexia had a brother, Alfred Ashford. The project they were a part of is Project Code Alexia. The project they were a part of, Project Code Alexia, was involved in procuring DNA from the body of their ancestor Veronica to create her clone. It was a vanity project as they wanted to restore the reputation of the Ashford family by recreating a child with intelligence as renowned of that as Veronica's. They also wanted to prevent Lord Spencer from gaining control over Umbrella Pharmaceuticals following the death of Dr. Edward Ashford. Alexia possessed genius intellect, but her brother Alfred was simply higher than average, possibly due to an error in the cloning process which was intended for creating Alexia. However, Dr. Ashford raised both kids at his home located under the Antarctica base. Alexia found employment in Umbrella Pharmaceuticals as a virologist after graduating from university when she was only 10 years old. The others treated her as an outcast due to her age, and she found no solace in people from her age due to her high intellect. She found comfort in Alfred, who loathed their father. Two years later, they tried to get their hands on a family gemstone when they learned the truth about how they were created. Their hatred for their father grew immensely, and they captured him the next year to use him as a test subject for the T. Veronica virus, which Alexia had created by combining the progenitor virus with an ancient virus. Dr. Ashford turned into Nosferatu, an insane monster. She later harnessed the full potential of the virus and injected herself with it. She then put herself in cryogenic suspension for 15 years so that the virus would not destroy her tissues and instead got the space to mature within her body. What did you think of these creatures? Did you enjoy this video? If yes, then don't forget to like and comment on this video. Till then, goodbye and have a nice one.